Best practices to switch from classic chat to messaging. These are some things that I have uh, compiled in a list with the help of my team. And uh, yeah, I hope these are going to be useful for you. Tip number six for switching from Zendesk classic chat to Zendesk messaging. Use omnichannel routing. Omnichannel routing is a relatively new feature from Zendesk, which uh, as the name suggests, in an omnichannel environment, it's great for you to create routing rules and to make sure that you assign tickets to agents in a fair and democratic way based on everyone's capacity. So in omnichannel routing, you set your agents and what they are actually handling. They're handling talk or telephony, they're handling email, they're handling chat, they're handling social media, and then you give them a capacity, how much capacity they can have. If they handle, for example, three chats at a time, then they're busy. You know, they can't take another email, they can't take another ticket. This is all to help you make sure that you're organized and uh, to have a round robin and fair way of assigning tickets to everyone in your team. This is also very nice because it avoids your some of the agents slacking off and maybe just finding a workaround to just skip uh, solving tickets altogether. And uh, this you usually happens in large teams. So this is a very good feature to uh, enable in your Zendesk. However, you have to be very careful because uh, there is a very easy way to do it wrong, uh, but there is a very massive increase in your productivity if you do it right. Have a conversation with your team, explore this to see how it can best work for you. Enable this to make sure that you give everyone a nice fresh ticket whenever they are available to take that ticket and have the energy to actually solve the request. Tip number seven for switching from Zendesk Classic chat to Zendesk messaging. Train your agents to use unified agent status. So as I was mentioning at the beginning of this video, very important that whenever you're making the switch to uh, messaging, you have your agents trained. Now, a reason for dropping productivity is precisely because your agents don't know how to work within this new environment and their productivity drops. It's normal, It's there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you have to be wary and make sure that you train your agents to use the unified agent status. Now, what you can do now is you can go into your live dashboards and and see how they're doing, see exactly uh, who's handling what and how well they are actually doing this. This gives you insight into who needs a little bit more training and who's actually doing a very good job. Tip number eight for switching from Zendesk Classic Chat to Zendesk Messaging. Sign up for Agent Historical Activity EAP. Now what this is, it's an early access to Zendesk Advanced Reporting. Now as I said at the beginning of this video, Zendesk is still working on Zendesk Messaging to make it really good and um, make it very productive and uh, also bring all those features from Classic Chat. And reporting is the one thing that is lacking still. There is a bunch of reports that you could see in Classic Chat that you can't see in messaging. So Zendesk is working on bringing these over and they've already made big progress. So what you can do now is you can sign up to this beta EAP and in this new EAP you can see a bunch of new data about your agents productivity and how well they're doing. And you can get a deep understanding of agent statuses and their activity in the past 30 days. And this gives you a lot of insight into who are your top performers and who are your top slackers. <laughs> We're doing two of these tips in a different location because uh, I wanted to say a little bit more about two of the topics, number nine and ten. So yeah, here goes. Tip number nine for switching from Zendesk Classic Chat to Zendesk Messaging. Manage inactive conversation load by enabling the messaging activity routing. Currently, inactive conversations do not count toward agent capacity. So this is problematic in 24-7 support. Why that is, is because, for example, if you receive 100 messages during the weekend or during the night when the agents are not, in, uh, not online, then whenever this agent comes to work or an agent comes to work and they are the first person to log in, these 100 conversations from during the weekend get assigned to them automatically, which is a really bad experience for the agents. And not only that, but it causes a lot of delay in getting back to customers, right? So imagine you have uh, your capacity as an agent set to maybe three people to handle three chats at a time, and then you have a hundred. <laughs> so you're swamped and probably won't be able to do anything for the rest of the day. Not only that, but your customer will become frustrated because nobody's actually getting back to them. Now this is because capacity only considers active conversations, not inactive ones. Fortunately, Zanis has created this new functionality called Turn On Messaging Activity Routing. Now what this does is it considers inactive conversations 
agents as active ones. So it will take into account the agent's capacity. So if they have a capacity of three and they have two active chats and then they have an inactive conversation, that counts as if their capacity is full. Now this creates a better experience for the agents and it also creates a better experience for your customers because agents will be able to get back to them in a timely manner instead of being swamped with a gazillion <laughs> tickets at a time. So again, when an agent comes back online, either on Monday or early in the morning or whenever, conversations will be distributed normally. Tip number 10 for switching from Zendesk Classic Chat to Zendesk Messaging. Train your agents to utilize ticket statuses to handle inactive conversations or create a Sanko automation for it. Now let's unpack this for a bit. So let's say an agent has a capacity of three concurrent chats. So they have two active ones and they're going back and forth and all is well. Now they have a third one which the customer has stepped out. And for the last 10 minutes, that conversation is still open and the agent's capacity now is still full because it counts as if the ticket is still open, it hasn't been solved. However, the agent is idle on one of the conversations and not doing anything. So the best practice would be to solve this uh, request, uh, train the agent to essentially uh, either use a macro to solve this request or ask the customer for a confirmation that the conversation is over. And if they don't get back within, I don't know, another two minutes, three minutes, they are able to close the conversation and they will be able to have free capacity to take on new conversations or new chats. Now, another smarter thing that you can do to automate this is you can create a Sunco automation for this. So as you know, Sunco or Sunshine Conversations from Zendesk is a way for you to extend the functionality of your bots. And uh, not only that, but uh, also create any kind of upgrade to your conversational experience. If you can imagine the Flow Builder, this is just adding more complexity to the what the Flow Builder can do. And not only that, that's just one side. This is the other side of automating conversations. So what you can do is create uh, this automation in Sanko, which uh, if a ticket has been, for example, idle or in open status and no conversation is still happening after 10, 15 minutes, then automatically solve or close the ticket. This frees up agent capacity so they can take on new conversations. Tip number 11 for switching from classic chat to Zendesk messaging, enable customer satisfaction for all channels. Now, if you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know that I've been banging this drum of enabling customer satisfaction all the time and keep it open for all channels. Don't be afraid to collect feedback. It's a deep insight into how you can better your product and how you can better your service and uh, how you can maybe train your agents or which agents you need to train. Don't be afraid. I know that this can be frustrating to get negative customer satisfaction, but it's the most valuable thing that you can do for your business. Big customers and successful companies do it all the time. Although it's hard and it comes with a lot of responsibility and accountability, they keep the customer satisfaction open and they allow customers to give feedback. Based on that feedback, they take it, they work it, and then they better the product and then they have more success because they keep those customers. Those customers are actually telling their friends and more people are starting to use the service. I know that it's hard, but do it. Collect feedback and don't be afraid. All right, this has been the video for today. I hope this brought you value. This is still a work in progress. I'm sure that you have your own ideas. Please comment to tell me what those ideas are and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.